Hey guys, it's Ishani, aka Total Makeup Junkie 101. So today I have the review video that you guys have been requesting so, so much. It is my thoughts on the new Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. You guys know that Urban Decay is kind of obsessed with their Naked series and they release something naked all the dang time. So this is the newest product launch. I picked mine up on the Urban Decay website for $54. I know this palette will be available everywhere that Urban Decay is sold in July. As far as I know, this is a permanent palette to the Urban Decay line, and it is technically their fifth naked palette. So in this review video, we will be talking all about this palette. I will tell you guys my thoughts on the quality. I'll show you guys full palette swatches. And I'm also going to show you guys comparisons of similar warm toned palettes on the market. So this is going to be a really, really detailed review. First and foremost, let's go ahead and talk about the packaging. I think the packaging is absolutely stunning. Urban Decay has just been kicking butt with their packaging. This has a really, really cool kind of like a sunset rainbow in the background and then it's kind of raised it has some texture on the top and then it's this nice kind of copper color on the back and even the box that it came in was really really cute and very thought out because it kind of looks like a matchbox like the whole bottom slides out and then the palette was just kind of resting in here which I thought was a nice little detail jumping right into the palette itself it does pop open like all the other naked palettes and as always you are getting 12 different shadows. You're also getting a little double-ended brush here at the bottom. Now I haven't actually used the brush yet, but it looks pretty nice. It's got kind of like a flat brush on one side and then a crease brush on the other side. So here's a better look at the color selection you're getting in the palette. You can see that you are getting a lot of medium toned colors. All of them are very, very warm toned. Here are swatches of all 12 of the colors you get in the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. From left to right, we have Ounce, Chaser, Sauced, Low Blow, Lumber, He Devil, Dirty Talk, Scorched, Cayenne, and Fuego ashes and ember overall you guys can see in a concentrated swatch the shadows seem fairly hit and miss some of them are really really pigmented and opaque where others definitely look like they need to be built up now let's go ahead and discuss the color selection in this palette like i pointed out earlier a lot of these colors are in that mid-tone range you're not getting anything too too dark i mean you are getting these two colors here this one I use a lot as my inner corner highlight and this one I use as my brow bone and it works perfectly for me. The only thing I would say is kind of missing is a dark like liner color. You could potentially use this dark plummy purple as a liner, but it's not as dark as I personally prefer to have. The most unique thing to me about this palette as compared to the other naked palettes is that you are getting a lot of a matte colors. Out of the 12 colors offered, seven of them are completely matte. This white over here has a little bit of like a satin, slightly shimmery finish. I really, really like the range of colors that are offered. I love the ones that are are in that foiled finish. I will say like colors like this, the kind of warm coppery foily shadows are fairly unique to this palette. Now in terms of the texture and pigmentation of these shadows, like I said, they are a little hit and miss. The mattes for the most part, I feel like don't necessarily swatch out in a concentrated swatch or with your finger very well, but I had no issues using them on the eyes. They built and blended really, really nicely. The foils in this palette, once again, really beautiful when you use them with brushes. Not not all of them swatch in a concentrated swatch amazingly. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys side by sides of this naked palette next to all four of the other naked palettes that Urban Decay has. So let's go ahead and do a side by side comparison of the original naked palette. This one I would have to say has been my favorite naked palette for so so long. So there you can see a side by side of the Urban Decay naked heat palette on the top 
and the original Naked palette on the bottom. Now let's go ahead and do a side-by-side -side next to the Urban Decay Naked 2. So there we have those two side-by-side. -side. The Naked Heat is on the top and the Naked 2 is on the bottom. Next up, let's go ahead and compare the Naked 3, which I was the most curious about seeing because this is the pinky toned palette. So here we have those two next to each other. The Urban Decay Naked Heat is on the top and the Naked 3 is on the bottom. You can see that the Naked Heat is almost like a darker, more like burnt version of the Naked 3. And then finally, I will do a side by side of the Urban Decay Naked Smoky. So here we have the Urban Decay Naked Heat on the top and the Naked Smoky on the bottom. You can see these almost look like opposites because the top is so sunsetty and warm and bronze and the bottom is so cool toned and like gray toned. So now that I showed you guys side by sides of this palette next to all of the other naked palettes, let's go ahead and show you guys some comparison swatches of this palette next to some other really, really popular warm toned palettes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by comparing the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. So here's a side by side look at both of those palettes. The top is is the Urban Decay Naked Heat. The bottom is the Anastasia Modern Renaissance. And here are some comparison swatches of those two palettes. The top row of swatches is the Urban Decay Naked Heat palette swatched all the way across my arm. And then on the bottom row, we have colors that are semi-similar from the Modern Renaissance palette. You guys can see that a lot of the darker matte browns really do match up. There are a lot of colors that I could not dupe within the Anastasia palette, specifically those metallic, coppery, bronzy shades. There's nothing like that in the Modern Renaissance. And then some colors that the Modern Renaissance palette has that the Naked Heat doesn't are those matte, really, really reddish colors like these two. There's nothing even close in the Naked Heat. The Naked Heat doesn't get that red toned. So between these two palettes, it's really just a personal preference. If you saw the Anastasia Modern Renaissance and thought that you're never going to use those reddish colors, they're just too bright or too out of your comfort zone, this one might suffice. Now let's go ahead and do a side by side next to the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette. This is another palette that has been hyped up so much. It is one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes of all time. So here we have a closer look at those two palettes. The top is the Urban Decay Naked Heat. The bottom is the Colored Rain Queen of hearts. And then here we have a direct swatch comparison of those two palettes. Across the top we have the Urban Decay Naked Heat palette and then on the bottom I have similar shades from the Queen of Hearts palette. The Queen of Hearts palette was able to replicate some of the more common matte shades in the Naked Heat palette but overall I mean none of the foiled shades could really be exact. That last shade Ember is really similar to D3 own in the Queen of Hearts palette, but the Queen of Hearts one is just so, so foiled and metallic and pigmented. And then colors that the Queen of Hearts palette has that aren't in the Naked Heat are like this foiled taupe, the foiled kind of baked golden brown, this really, really true matte orangey shade, this kind of matte mauvey pink. There's just a much broader range of colors in the Queen of Hearts palette. You're getting a lot more purpley tones, more reddish tones than you're getting in the Naked heat and the texture of the Queen of Hearts palette is superior to the Naked Heat I would say. The mattes in here are so so blendable, so beautiful and these foils I mean they are intense. I love this palette. And then the final comparison I wanted to make was next to the Morphe 35O palette. So here you can see we have the Urban Decay Naked Heat on the top and the Morphe 35O palette on the bottom. And then here we have direct comparison swatches. Again, Urban Decay Naked Heat is swatched across the top of my arm. And then across the bottom we have some comparable colors from the Morphe 35O. Funny enough, I really thought I I would find more duplicates from the 35O because you're getting 35 different warm toned colors. And of course in the Naked Heat, you're only getting 12. Again, some of the more common matte colors like the matte dark brown, those were really easy.
easy to dupe but those really really foiled coppery toned shades there wasn't really anything like it in the 35-0 the urban decay one has a full spectrum you see light you see medium you see some sort of dark colors but in the 35-0 funny enough I feel like so so many of these colors in this area are all the same. Quality wise, I think the Urban Decay one is a little bit better. Of course, the Morphe palettes are super inexpensive, a lot more inexpensive than any of the other palettes I talked about. So to round up this review, honestly, what do I think of the Urban Decay Naked Heat? I think it is a really good standalone palette. I think the quality of it is very, very decent. I do think if you want to swatch this in store, you might be a little disappointed because I was personally disappointed when I swatched them out on my hand. But when I use them on my eyes, I think it performs beautifully. Now, do I prefer this warm tone palette over like these two, which are two of my favorite palettes? in my entire collection honestly no because I do think both the modern renaissance and the queen of hearts gives you a better range of colors you just get more to pick from because while you can go orangey you can also go reddish you can also go plummy in both of these palettes whereas with the naked heat you're just going to go orangey that's basically the only colors that you're offered in here these coppery metallic foiled colors you're not getting those in the modern renaissance or in the queen of hearts but if you are one of those people who didn't like these palettes because you didn't really like the reddish tones that are in it but you still want something warm toned or orangey toned I definitely think this palette is worth it. So yeah, that is everything for today's video. Please be sure to let me know if the Urban Decay Naked Heat is on your personal wish list. In case you guys didn't know yet, I did start my own makeup line called Ronnie Cosmetics. We have six lipsticks, which you can shop through that link up there. I will also go ahead and put a subscribe link to my channel right down there. But that is everything. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, supporting, and subscribing. And I will talk to you guys in my next video on Thursday. I'll see you then. Bye.